Modern racing games are like pretty bad. Bruh. I genuinely can't think of the last racing game I played that actually exceeded my expectations. I think maybe Dirt 5 is probably the most recent example, but that's literally not out yet. So I think it's a bit unfair to judge that game yet because it's just not, I haven't played the full game yet. But before that, we're looking at probably what? The Crew 1 maybe? But even then, when you compare these games to some of the games we got over the course of the golden era of racing games, it's nowhere near really. On one end of the spectrum, we have tech demos that are a little bit soulless. We have games that are just broken and have no sense of direction. Or we have Horizon clones. Look at us, we're a festival that doesn't even celebrate the festival. But roll the clock back to 2008 and times were very, very different. Test Drive Unlimited was just starting to get its feet stuck in the ground. Need for Speed had pretty much finished its golden era and was going on to lesser times, but let's just not talk about that in this video. Forza Motorsport was getting ready to release one of their best games ever made. Let's not forget about Burnout Paradise. But when I sat down to do this video, there was one game that was undoubtedly in my mind better than every single game I've listed here. This has nothing to do with rose-tinted nostalgia glasses. I genuinely played through the whole game again just for this video to see, am I really tripping or is this game actually as good as I remember? Bombaclart. Midnight Club LA is the best racing game of all time. My personal favorite. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly why. <laughs> Racing game stories are usually dog shit. A lot of people give them the excuse of, oh, it's cheesy, it's a racing game, it's not supposed to be taken seriously. Midnight Club LA is a perfectly executed racing game story. It's not corny. Characters actually have realistic conversations that you could see someone having in real life. I don't know, I guess what I'm trying to say is in Midnight Club, they actually speak like people uh, and not robots. <laughs> what, you've been shopping before we race? Sure. Picking up new underwear? A few bits and pieces. And I haven't even got into the actual story yet. So you are a man called Leo. You arrive in LA in needing of a car. You get a hold of Book, who is a contact that one of your street racing friends in the East has given you. And it's typical mumbo jumbo. If you race through the ranks, there's a bit of portrayal, but it's nice and light. It's just enough. The story doesn't take center stage over the driving. It's exactly how you'd want a racing game story to be. Now, the actual plot, it's not going to win awards for BAFTAs and whatnot. I don't know. The dialogue for me is a lot more natural. There's actually a little bit of character development as well in this game. I think overall, it's just a more well around his story. I genuinely found myself sitting there actually chuckling at some of the jokes. They were quite funny. Me and Jin, you know Jin? Even though he looks lame, he's a serious tuner driver. We ain't got time for you. No, no, you guys seem too busy cuddling. Bruh. Still stand by what I've said about other racing game stories. Like, I don't think they're actually that important to racing games generally. But definitely towards the end of MCLA, I was getting invested in the characters. And by the end of the story, you're really determined to take down Book. And it does it in a way which, you know, not many other games have done. So, hats off to the story. Let's go on to the progression. They don't do racing game progression like this anymore, man. There's no artificial grind. You're always unlocking stuff, but it always feels like you're working towards things as well. In typical Rockstar fashion, this game is very long. It took me literally one day's worth of playtime. That's 24 hours to finish the game from start to finish. And the game drip feeds you cars. It drip feeds you performance. But it's never to the point where I feel like I'm grinding for things. Things just kind of unlock as you're going along, which is the way that it should be. I I drove a lot of cars in my playthrough, a hell of a lot of cars. The game definitely gives you cars on a pretty frequent basis, but it just doesn't give you like the high-end cars right at the start. You have to work for them and you definitely have to be sensible with your money, but I think MCLA has some of the best progression, not only just for the types of cars you race, but for the skills that you unlock, for the EMP, aggro, zone, and raw effects that you earn, for the car type progression, so obviously you unlock the luxury boss at the end, and the muscle car boss, and the low rider boss, etc. The way that uh, events unlock around the map, and pink slip events unlock in the map, it's at the perfect rate for a racing game. It's not too quick, it's not too small. For how big the game is generally, it's a perfect length. 
I do think towards the end they could have slashed some of the later downtown events when you're replaying events. But I think that's a product of its time. This wasn't really that controversial when the game came out. Like every other game was doing this. But I think definitely looking back on it now in 2020, that's something that they probably could have cut. It's just some of the last events. But other than that, honestly, the progression's fantastic. And then when you beat the game, you're open to all the cars. All the cars are free, so you can just go in. Do whatever customization you want to the cars, level up your remaining skills. It's just perfect. Honestly, I wish more games did this. And that leads us perfectly onto the cars. <laughs> Midnight Club LA is a perfect example of what a well curated car list can do. Nowadays, Forza and, you know, not just Forza, a lot of game companies focus on having these huge car lists with a lot of filler and a lot of cars that no one's interested in. Midnight Club LA has a better car list than some of the modern Forza games. You've got everything from low riders to exotics to luxury vehicles to tuners to hatchbacks to sports bike, police cars. It has one of the best car lists of all time, honestly. And if any of you guys actually own the game physical and have the poster, I'm going to put up a picture of it on the screen right now. If you have this at home, just have a look at it and, and just have a look at the car list and just have a look at how mad it looks. Also, really nice touch, they included these in the game, by the way. And that doesn't even get into the customization. You know how Need for Speed nowadays say it's really hard to get customization for certain cars because it's all licensed, etc.? Midnight Club LA has licensed customization for every single car, at least four bumpers, and this is 2008. You know how in Need for Speed they say they can't put uh, tire width in and, tra and track spaces in for whatever reason? Midnight Club LA was doing tire profiles, tire width, you know, rim size, all of that stuff in 2008. You could put Pirelli P0s on your car in 2008. And yes, you can do this with the bikes as well. Literally, oh my god, every single car. Now, some of the customization is dated, but as you can see on the screen right now, it is absolutely possible to make really, really nice cars in MCLA still. The only thing that's missing is literally track spaces. Bruh. Probably just because in 2008, that wasn't the cool thing. Uh, but honestly, if they had track width spaces and wheel spaces, I honestly think this customization would be timeless. And for some cars, it's not that bad, to be honest. Um, for some of the cars where the wheels do come out to the right fitment, it's all right, but I can forgive the fitment issues because I haven't even talked about the interior customization. These are just things that, you know, in 2008, looking into the future of racing games, you would think they would be doing this now, but no one is, has come even close to the variety in this game. Um, and it's just something I wanted to mention. I haven't even talked about hydraulics, airbags. There's so many other things in the customization and the car list that it's, it's just crazy. As far as cars and customization go, there's no modern racing game that even comes close to MCLA. And another thing that no other racing game comes close to is atmosphere. Get, 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 I don't think any racing game world is as authentic as Midnight Club LA's LA. Whether it's the real world stores and stuff like the Game Stops and the 7-Elevens that, that are plotted around the map, or the real life locations like the Staples Center. You know, I can go on and on and on just, you know, listing the places like Venice Beach. I think Midnight Club LA's version of LA is actually better than Los Santos from GTA 5. It's obviously a lot more dialed and a lot more dense, but it feels a lot more real to me and a lot more alive. There's always traffic no matter what the time. The soundtrack is one of the greatest soundtracks to ever bless a video game like not even just a racing game the other races roaming the map you know the freeway races that you'll see it, it all just culminates you know the ipod advert in game all of this to me it, it, it all just culminates to this one living breathing world and i know it's a cliche to say this but genuinely midnight clubs los angeles is another character in the game itself. Not to mention this was before racing games had the obsession with making absolutely everything open. It's good to have closed maps. I don't know why every single racing game has to have a really fucking open map. It's okay, I don't wanna drive over a field in a street racing game. Midnight Club LA's map is a perfect size. By the end of the game, you'll know where all the shortcuts are. You would have memorized it, especially because it's a long game anyway. But you know, it doesn't take two years to go from one side of the map to another side of the map. It's one of those games that by the end of it, you'll actually know where you're going. And I honestly miss that from racing games. Nowadays, it's always an obsession of getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I do think for certain games, it's better. Like the Crew 1's execution of a big map was fantastic. But I don't think 
Horizon needs a huge map. I don't think Need for Speed games need a huge map. They need a Midnight Club map where shortcuts are actually rewarding to use and cleverly placed. And there's actually a lot of depth to Midnight Club's map the longer you play it. And there's just nothing like that nowadays in racing games. I miss the days where there were shortcuts that you actually had to learn. And, you know, going into multiplayer, you'd actually learn shortcuts that you didn't know were there previously. Not to mention the whole of South Central, which... You know, I'm not going to touch on in today's video, but maybe further down the line, I'm, I might go into that because that's a whole nother kettle of fish. For me, the physics, I love them. There's layers to them. You know, the longer you play the game, you'll learn things about the physics. Like you can step down if you double press RT, like you can do in real life with real life auto boxes. Every single car class in this game handles completely differently. Muscle cars are super duper heavy. As where tuna cars skid like mad everywhere. You know, then you've got bikes and you know, weight transferring with bikes is a completely different kettle of fish. I, for me, there's just layers to this physics model. And I know a lot of people just discard it because this is a true arcade physics model like this isn't a simcade model this is a properly arcade model and i honestly miss it i wish more games did this you know it's it takes a lot of skill to do as well there is absolutely exploits with the physics in this game like wall riding's a problem and it doesn't help the ai is super aggro sometimes but it doesn't ruin what is for me a really stellar racing game and again i think a lot of this is just a product of its time it's, it was 2008 so a lot of other games were doing all of these things but i didn't find any of it rage inducing for me and one sign of a really good physics model is it actually gets better when it gets faster a lot of handling models when you get really really fast will just spaz the fuck out so you know need for speeds like that even forces like that in s2 sometimes it just gets a little bit much you can tell the map isn't made for to go that fast midnight club la is at its most fun when the game can keep up with you going 200 miles per hour. Some of the best moments I had in this game were towards the end when I was just I was just doing all types of stupid shit and again, something which modern racers need to learn from. Because it wasn't just Midnight Club LA that has that same feeling. Like Burnout 3, the faster you go, the more fun it gets. Need to be most wanted, you know, same thing. All the stellar physics models that we've used, you know, in previous games it has that factor and I just really miss it and I think Midnight Club LA for me even though I know some people don't like the physics in this game for me I really really enjoyed using them again right the game modes oh it just keeps carrying on there's so much good stuff to say about this game so the checkpointing system you can't exploit it. It's one of the best. I miss Midnight Club checkpoints. They're so good. It rewards map knowledge, you know, shortcuts, all that kind of good stuff. The AI will often take a different route to you. So you can have up to four races at a time taking different routes. It's a little bit mad. You've got red light races. So this is when you have one checkpoint in one area, another checkpoint in another area, and you have to find your own route there. Again, the map's made for it. And you can really tell, you know, there's certain channels that you'll have to drive down. And you'll only know that once you've played a lot of the game, but you yeah, know i don't know why this just doesn't exist you've got delivery missions takedown missions pink slip races wager races different types of race series so you've got best of three championship not to mention the online modes like ctf it goes on and on and on how on earth in one of the best racing games this generation horizon 4 they only have races as in circuit races and sprint races and that's it uh, and you know midnight club doing all this i don't know it just doesn't make any sense to me modes are something which have just been lacking across the board to be honest i'm quite looking forward to dirt 5 because it just has more modes but mcla knocks it out of the park i think red light races are gonna go down as one of my favorite types of races of all time fucking fantastic right multiplayer so I didn't get a chance to play this uh, recently, but I played a shit ton of it as a kid. Um, to say it was ahead of its time for the multiplayer stuff, is, I think is an understatement. You know, the amount of modes exclusive to multiplayer was crazy. You had things like Rate My Ride, which was a community tool where you could share your cars and sell your cars on a marketplace. You know, the whole South Central thing came through multiplayer DLC. There was a race editor in the game, so you could actually create your own races and play them with other people. Rockstar used to host online tournaments. Uh, on a weekly basis, which you could enter to win prizes, exclusive cars, etc. Have I even got to get started on the Audi R8? Like, that was a whole thing ahead of its time. A lot of people will talk about Burnout Paradise as one of the best multiplayers of all time, but to be honest, I think Midnight Club LA was doing a lot of revolutionary stuff as well. And without a doubt, for me, is absolutely up there with one of the best multiplayers in a racing game. 
genuinely hits all the marks. And that leads me to the bad stuff. Because there is definitely bad stuff. Like, I want you guys to realise this game isn't perfect. For one, the AI are batshit sometimes. They have a line, and if they have a line, well, good luck, mate, because you're going to get fucked. It's super easy to get busted on a bike sometimes, even though the police overall aren't too bad. They're quite a challenge sometimes, actually. But on a bike, you get hit off near them. You're arrested. And honestly, that's as far as my, my, my kind of bad points go, really. The game does so much right. If you haven't played this on Xbox One backwards compatibility, uh, it runs at 1080p60 and it genuinely looks better than some titles, some current gen titles. You're doing yourself a disservice if you haven't played Midnight Club LA. And even if you have played the game, um, play it again, man. I uh, like going through this game again made me realize how bad we have it nowadays. Rockstar, you're probably not going to do it, but and you're probably no one's ever going to watch this from Rockstar, but... Fucking hell, please to God, drop GTA Online cars and make a Midnight Club 5. I'm here, I will suck so much dick to have that, bro. Midnight Club LA, the best racing game ever made, and that is why. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like, subscribe. I'm off for a week now. I'm on holiday, so uh, if there's no videos next week, that's why. Uh, shout out if you made it this far. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you guys in the next one. You guys have been awesome. Stay safe and peace. Okay, could it be that you are at the crib with another lady?